Good morning and a very warm welcome to you this morning from the parish of Childbury with Shorthampton as we celebrate Holy Communion. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We pray together. Loving Lord, fill us with your life-giving, joy-giving, peace-giving presence, that we may praise you now with our lips and all the day long with our lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, long-suffering and of great goodness, I confess to you, I confess with my whole heart, my neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments, my wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, the hurts I have done to others and the good I have left undone. O oh God, forgive me, for I have sinned against you and raise me to newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen collect for the fourth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of life, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Alleluia, alleluia, I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to the Pharisees, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he's brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of a stranger. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. 
The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Every morning at breakfast for the last week, my husband and I have had the same conversation, centering on how long the lockdown will last, what is the best route out of it, and in what ways the social landscape will have changed when we do emerge. Neither of us have any insights beyond those given to us by the media, which, as you know, has as many opinions as there are journalists, influencers, government advisers. My heart goes out to those advisers whose job it really is to decide what to do, rather than simply indulge in speculation over a cup of coffee. Whose advice to listen to, out of all the different opinions there are, each one so apparently credible, so research-based? How to determine how the population will react, how to balance deaths from coronavirus against deaths from abuse, cancer, mental illness? Although we may not be responsible for decisions which affect lives and livelihoods in such a large-scale fashion, nonetheless, we still have decisions to make. We have to decide what is right or wrong every minute of the day. What to do, what not to do. We have to listen to the various voices around us and those within us and select which voice we're going to act upon. We have to ask ourselves, what does God want me to do? What is it that the Spirit is placing on my heart? Jesus, in speaking of himself, tells us that the sheep know the voice. They follow him. They will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. We learn from history books that sheep in the Middle East were not raised up to be slaughtered at a year old but kept primarily for their wool and remained in the flock all their lives. They had a relationship with their shepherd that spanned a number of years, a relationship in which they had time to become familiar with the shepherd and with the places that the shepherd would lead them to. The problem that we have today, and indeed it's always been a problem, is in coming to recognise and know the voice of Christ our Shepherd in the midst of all the voices that speak around us and within our own hearts and minds. How do we decide what the Lord is telling us? How do we know what is right or wrong, good or bad? And this question of discernment extends well beyond the boundaries of our prayer and spiritual life. It reaches into every aspect of our lives relationships, politics, finance, work and leisure. Much of what Jesus had to say concerned our attitudes and actions regarding money, and most of what he said and did, even when what he was doing was healing people, casting out demons and telling people to love and forgive one another, most of that was regarded as political enough to get him into deep, deep trouble, so deep that ultimately the decision was made to silence him by hanging him from a cross. One person's politics is another person's religion, and one person's religion, it turns out, affects everyone's politics. In the midst of all the conversations, we have to listen hard in order to hear that still small voice, which is the voice of God. What is it that Jesus would do? about caring for the shielded within our community, about supporting those on whom lockdown is placing an intolerable strain, about the disease raging out of control in refugee camps, about the unhappiness of so many of our nation's children, about out of control consumerism and the tendency we have to seek our own happiness without a thought for the needs of others. Such questions can only be answered by us as individuals and as a congregation 
If we enter into a continuous relationship with the Lord and with one another, a relationship like that of the sheep to the shepherd and the sheep to the rest of the flock, a relationship in which we spend time with one another, eating, resting together, supporting one another in times of danger, praying, listening, and listening some more through prayerful reflection, in diligent study, and by quiet and peaceable dialogue with others whose wisdom we know to be Christ-like. And even then, the answers that we receive in our hearts may not be the same ones that come into the heart of another. Though I think we might be surprised about how and often, in fact, the answers we get are the same when we try in all earnestness to listen for Christ and follow his voice. I think, too, that the important thing is not to be too anxious to come up with the answer. Very often that way, dogmatic assertion and narrow-minded thinking lies. I think actually that in listening and struggling with the issues in our lives and in the life of our community, we will actually begin to live the answers that we have already been given. The voice of our shepherd is clear about how we should live and act. It's clear about what our attitude should be towards those who are both our friends and those whom we regard as our enemies. The picture that the passage in Acts shares with us is an indication of the wonderful things that can be achieved if we do all things in common. And we are seeing some of those wonderful things in our community already, led by people who have listened to the burden of their hearts and acted upon them. And if we are unable to act, we must pray. If we are not responsible for deciding how best to manage this pandemic, we can pray for those who are, holding all those who must make decisions which affect others, however great or small, in our hearts, confident that just as we will hear the voice of the shepherd if we listen, so he will hear ours. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And our intercessor this morning is Rosalind Scott. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Loving God, creator of all things, we thank you that you watch over us as a good shepherd watches over the sheep. We pray for the millions of people who are struggling at this time, whose lives and livelihoods have been disrupted by the spread of the coronavirus. We pray for Christian Aid and other international organizations working to receive, relieve suffering and provide essential services for people whose resources are stretched to the limit. Teach us how to use this present crisis to tackle inequality and the spread of disease and to create a more sustainable and environmentally friendly world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, your son Jesus told us to follow him and have faith. We pray for the church, especially for Christians in places where they are already marginalized and in need of protection as they confront new dangers during the pandemic. We pray for Christian leaders who confront ignorance and injustice and seek to bring comfort and hope in troubled places. At this time of isolation and anxiety, 
We pray for the churches in our deanery and for everyone who is using their skills and imagination to keep us in contact with one another. Help us to share our hopes and fears and to care for one another in whatever ways we can find. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for our community where we live and work, particularly this week for the people who live in Sturt Close and Sturt Road. We thank you for everyone who's helping to support us through this difficult time, for people working in the food shops and pharmacy, for volunteers who collect and deliver shopping to people isolated at home, and for postal workers and delivery drivers, bringing us communications and essential supplies. Help us to find ways to show kindness and encourage one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, your son Jesus showed his compassion for people in distress. We pray for your blessing on people who are ill and their carers, and for the medical and social care staff who are risking their own health to care for others. May they find strength to cope with pain and uncertainty and receive love and support from the people around them. At the end of our journey through life, you call us home. We remember our family members, friends and neighbours gone before us and pray for everyone who's grieving the loss of someone they loved, especially for those who have been separated from parents or children in the last hours of life. Give them and us faith in your transforming love and hope of reunion in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, your son Jesus promised us abundant life. Show us how to enjoy and to share the good things that you've given us and to have courage when times are hard. Help us to follow where Christ leads us and grant us faith in his love and protection. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen high priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love, you gave us Jesus, your son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. 
Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood, shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. the body of Christ. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your son, Jesus Christ, to be the good shepherd and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection and give us grace to follow in his steps. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. A couple of things. First of all, as well as our Wednesday morning nine o'clock communion, on Friday morning at nine o'clock we will be, no I, I will be having a service of morning prayer to um, commemorate VE Day. That's being live streamed at nine, but obviously it will stay on the YouTube channel for the rest of the day. If you want to download a copy of the service, um, then we'll post it up on the website sometime this week. Second thing is that work of art, which is the virtual pilgrimage from Charlbury to Shorthampton, has now been completed and uploaded onto the YouTube channel. Do have a look at it and, and give some feedback. It can be no more honest than that given to me by my brother, who said he would like more jokes, more history, and a little less prayer, please. But I think he's missed the point of it. But do comment, send your comments, please, because I am planning on making further ones, provided I can get the production team to join with me. 
Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.